Virginia Schutte and Professor Dave invited me over to tell you about my research. I am fascinated by foundation species, which are organisms that make habitat just by growing themselves. Anything that impacts a foundation species will impact the entire ecosystem because everything that lives in that ecosystem depends on the foundation species for habitat. I got my PhD working on how the different ways that mangrove trees grow changes what lives in mangrove forests. Mangroves are trees that live in the ocean. Their roots actually grow down into the salt water. They live mostly in the tropics because they're killed by cold weather and in many places they make dense forests. One of the ways that they've adapted to live in salt water is by keeping some of their roots up above the water where they can breathe. Red mangroves make really complicated habitat with their aerial roots, especially underwater. I spent a year snorkeling through the mangrove forests of Panama to figure out why more complicated habitat means more stuff that lives in that habitat. I lived in a research station run by the Smithsonian on a bay full of small mangrove islands on the Caribbean side of Panama near Costa Rica. The first few months, a field assistant and I set up a humongous experiment. We cut away roots to see what the roots offered to species that lived there. We cut back the roots to see if the number of roots mattered. We stripped the roots bare of sponges, oysters, and other stuff to see if they modified mangrove habitat or just lived on it. And of course, we left some roots alone because we had to have a normal to compare all of our changes to. Most days we spent entirely on the water. We left the dock around 7 a.m. I drove a small boat around 45 minutes to the islands and then I would hop in the water and make measurements or change things around. My assistant would follow me with the boat and write down measurements or help in other ways. I had a lunch break, but I would spend around eight hours a day in the water and on days where I visited all the sites in my experiment, I snorkeled around two miles. The most terrifying experiences of my life come from this experiment. I measured sea stars and brittle stars which live underneath the mangrove roots and they're nocturnal. So we would take a boat out at night and I would jump in the ocean by myself with a single flashlight to gather data. Sometimes my entrance would scare up sharks that like to live underneath the mangrove roots and they'd skitter away and cloud up the water. But even when there were no sharks, I would have to dive down to gather the data, which means that my head would pop back up amongst the roots and there would be things touching me and on me and around me that I couldn't see because I was wearing a mask and my heart rate was up. Oh my gosh. My research showed that what lives on the roots, those sponges and oysters and other stuff, are just as important as the roots themselves for making great habitat. I also spent a summer living in the Florida Keys looking at what eats that stuff that lives on mangrove roots. I lived on the Everglades side of Key Largo and I kayaked a mile each way to my field site every day. I would use a snorkel, but I was wearing boots instead of diving fins, and I walked around underneath the mangrove roots in the mangrove forest. I would cut little sponge pieces out of nearby sponges, and I zip-tied them to mangrove roots that were either dangling above the seafloor or were anchored down into it. I worked in a channel that was the entrance to a big bay, so I got to see everything going in or out of that bay. I saw dolphins swim by once while I was underwater. Big fish like Drum and Snook would go by. I learned to work with my back to the mangrove island and not to the open water. Because when you're wearing a mask, it's like you have tunnel vision. You can only see what's straight in front of you. One time I caught movement out of the corner of my eye and I turned to see a manatee right behind me. And they are bigger than you think. And the water makes things look bigger too. It magnifies things. And let me tell you, goosebumps underneath a wetsuit with a flush of a adrenaline is a really weird feeling. Anyway, my experiment showed that when roots grow into the bottom, sea stars climb up them and strip them of the sponges and oysters and other tasty things that live on them. Of course, sea stars can't jump, so the dangly roots are sea star free. These two studies together mean that red mangrove roots that grow into the water without touching the bottom provide more complicated layered habitat that supports more organisms and a more diverse set of organisms than roots that grow into the seafloor. This matters because less than half of the red mangroves in the Caribbean live in spaces that are deep enough that they can grow into the water without growing into the seafloor. Mangrove trees, like a lot of other things, are under threat from humans, which means that we are also the solution. But we have to be careful with how we protect and restore them because we could do a great job conserving red mangroves, but if we don't conserve the right type, we might lose that complicated, layered root habitat function, which means that we would lose the nursery grounds for tropical oceans.
Thanks so much for letting me introduce you to underwater mangrove ecosystems and foundation species. I make videos about science that makes life better over on my own channel, so if you enjoyed this video, please come say hello there. My next video will be about the world's largest waterfall, which isn't the one you're thinking of. Talk more soon. Thank <laughs> you.